Today I'm going to go over why we use lens hoods and UV filters and the pros and cons to both. Now the, the whole idea to a lens hood is to primarily prevent stray light from entering the lens. Now this could be from the sun, this could be from, for example, the light that I have off to the side, really any light source. And the whole idea is it just acts like a shade and that's it. So if you've got the sun up above, it's going to block right here or if you have it off to the side somewhere you're just going to block the stray light whereas if you don't have it it's going to enter and it could create lens flare and as a result reducing the contrast in your final image so if you're trying to prevent that trying to prevent lens flare pop a hood on and you're good to go now there still is a chance I mean if you point this at the sun or the light source you're going to get light in but the likelihood of that happening with a lens hood is drastically lower than without. The other thing it's going to do, it's going to add richer colors and deeper saturation to your final image. And, you know, you could correct that in post, but the less amount of time in post-production is better. We all want to be out there shooting, not sitting behind a computer and moving sliders and adjusting. It, it takes time and... If you've got a lot, of, uh, a lot of images, it becomes mind-numbing after a while. So, <clears throat> with those two things in mind, or a few things in mind, rather, uh, I think a lens hood is worth it, with just that. Now, the other added bonus to having a lens hood is protection. Now, I've seen people drop their cameras with the lenses and lens hoods, and it's a sickening feeling, and a, a bad sight when you see a camera go crashing to the ground, especially lens first. And this particular lens that I saw hit the ground, it was protected by the lens hood. The lens hood shattered into a bunch of pieces. It was done, it was long gone, but the lens was in perfect shape, not a scratch on it. And that could also be the case if you're hiking around the woods, you know, you've got sticks and branches, everything going in you want to protect the front element because you don't want to scratch the lens. Uh, in my situations, uh, most of the time, for protection wise that is, uh, if I'm shooting a concert or something at a nightclub or a bar, you know, lots of people around and there's stuff banging around, corners of tables, people's fingers, you know, it, it just keeps that stuff away from the front of my lens. That's the most important part. You do not want to damage that or even mark it. So, you know, it's really going to be your call whether you want to uh, spend the extra money to buy a lens hood. If you get the higher quality lenses like the Canon L series or the Nikon Pro series lenses, they're all going to come with lens hoods. Unfortunately, I know for Canon that if you get the just normal EF lenses or the, the EFS, they're not going to come with hoods. You have to buy that separately. Uh, something else you should think about too is don't just get generic hoods because hoods are made for certain lenses and if you have a hood that's too long for example on this lens you're gonna risk vignetting around it and that's just like a dark circle around your image so you really need to make sure if you buy uh, just buy a, a no-name brand fits any sort of lens it, it's just not going to uh, it's not gonna work as it should in most cases now with that being said I do have one of those for my 50 millimeter lens. It's just a rubber screw-on style lens hood. And I don't have this for protection. Because as you'll see in a second, once I figure out how to put this back on, if I were to drop this, it just collapses the hood. It really doesn't offer any protection at all. The only thing it does do is block stray light from coming in. And in this position right here, it's perfectly fine, blocks out light, doesn't create any extra vignetting, but as soon as I start to pull it out more, it sticks out, so now it's going to create a bit of a dark ring around my final image. So with that being a screw-on style, this, which is more typical, is a bayonet style. It's got a little groove around the inside, which you line up, 
and then you just turn it and it sticks on. So as you can see it's not just lens hoods aren't just for people to look professional when they're out and about shooting. They, they do serve a purpose and a function. Something that you know it's a bit of a pet peeve for me uh, not something I lose sleep over but people who walk around with their lens hoods reversed. It's just a little thing that drives me nuts, you know. Um, this doesn't do anything. All it does is hinder performance on your lens. I'm fighting to get at my switches here. If I decide to manual focus, I can't turn the ring. So this is just pointless. It does absolutely nothing. So if you're one of those people, turn it around or just take it off. Just one or the other, you know. <laughs> but that's just me. Who knows? Everybody's got their own little thing that drives them nuts. Um, one last thing before I move on to the filters is when you have the lens hoods. If I'm out in an event, concerts, uh, just something where I'm carrying my bag around, if I need to swap out lenses quick, I just pop the new lens on, and with the hoods like this, I don't have to worry about caps or anything. I just stuff it in my bag, and nothing's going to touch the inside. So again, just stuff it in my bag and it's good to go for the next time. If I need it again, just pull off my cap, screw it on, put the other one in, lens hood down, and we're good to go. So the final thing is UV filters. Now this has been a hot topic for as long as they've been around for digital cameras. The whole idea to UV filters was that back in the days of film, that they would block UV light and haze. Now apparently I wasn't a film shooter, dabbled a little bit with it in high school, but um, what was I going to say there? Completely lost my frame of mind. Um, digital sensors aren't uh, sensitive to UV light apparently. Now you can find a lot more information about this online. I can't really describe it to you. I just don't completely understand it. All I know is that UV doesn't affect digital. So why do I use UV filters? Well, the simple answer to that is protection. But I have my hood for protection. It's, um, I look at it as a bit of reassurance. You know, it helps me sleep at night, I guess, when I've got expensive lenses like that. Just a little bit of extra protection on there. And the argument against these UV filters is that they'll decrease image quality and potentially increase the amount of lens flare that comes in. Now with the image quality being decreased, yes that's true. Theoretically, the more glass you add in front of a lens, the more it's going to decrease the final image quality. And that's where expensive UV filters and cheap ones come into play not all glass is created equal. The cheap stuff is going to have imperfections. It could be wavy, not perfectly straight. It could be weak. Um, the cheaper stuff's not going to have good coatings that's going to prevent the, uh, the lens flares. Whereas if you have something like a, a B&W filter here, they're excellent quality glass, brass ring all the way around, and I've looked at images with and without and I can't find any difference. I mean, I'm sure if you get right in and you start inspecting individual pixels within the image, you'll be able to see. But realistically, the, the size that people are going to be viewing images at, even big, huge prints, nobody's going to be able to tell, oh yeah, you had uh, your UV filter on. It's just not going to happen. That being said, if you use a cheap filter, like one of those $10 ones, you do run the risk of having that happen. Um, I'm going to do a test between a no-name brand, cheapo UV filter, and these B&Ws in the near future, and we're going to inspect the difference between the two, as well as without, and we're going to see what happens. So, in my case, a UV filter saved my butt, or at least saved my wallet from being gouged hugely. On my 24-70, to which is on the camera right now, I was, uh, I was pulling it out of my big camera bag and I had my tripod attached to the top. I've got some buckles that it can go on. It's a nice big low pro bag. So 
my tripod still attached, I went to lift the cover with my tripod and I pulled my camera out. Now the the hood was reversed because I'm storing for a long period of time with the lens cap on. Well what happened is for somehow the tripod slipped out of my hand and it came crashing down right on the front of the lens, knocked the lens cap off and it just shattered the uh, the UV filter that I had on that lens and it spun it out of my hand and went flying across the room. And after I went and changed my underwear, I, I inspected the lens and everything with the exception of the UV filter was in perfect working order. There wasn't a scratch on the lens. Uh, I paid $1,600 for that lens when I think it was new and you know, had I smashed the front of that element, um, but yeah, I would have been a bit upset. So, you know, the people telling you that you don't need a filter for protection, they're not going to buy you a new lens in the event that something like that happens. You know, spend the money. If you got a good lens, spend a hundred bucks on a UV filter or sixty. You can even get some decent ones for. So, just just think about it. Make up your own mind. If you decide against it, that's fine, but just be aware of the pros and cons to both lens hoods and UV filters. So um, form your own opinion. I may not always be right. People around the internet aren't always going to be right either. So, so with that in mind, um, again, if you have anything to add, just feel free to put in the comment section below. Feel free to subscribe and like the video. And I'll come back with more videos in the very near future. Take care. Du, 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 du.